In this lesson, we're going to talk about one-dimensional motion. One-dimensional motion is when objects travel along straight lines. Now we know that we live in a three-dimensional world and objects are able to travel in all three of those dimensions. They can travel side to side, which is the x-axis. They can travel up and down, which we'll call the y-axis. And they can also travel forward and back, which we'll call the z-axis. Now when we start talking about motion, it's really difficult to jump right into the three-dimensional motion. So we start with one-dimensional motion, which we'll do here. Um, some examples of one-dimensional motion are a race car traveling down a straight racetrack. Um, it could be an airplane um, driving down a straight runway before it takes off, or it can even be an apple falling straight from a tree down to the ground. So there's three topics that we'll talk about for one-dimensional motion. The first being displacement. We'll define displacement and we'll look at it in mathematical terms, and we'll even compare displacement with the term distance traveled. Now, distance traveled and displacement sound very similar, but there is a an important distinction that we need to make and we'll, and we'll talk about it in this lesson. We're also going to talk about velocity. We'll talk about average velocity and we'll talk about instantaneous velocity and the difference between the two. And we'll even compare velocity with the term speed. Now again, velocity and speed seem very similar, but there is an um, important difference that we need to make and we'll talk about that. The last topic that we're going to talk about for one dimensional motion is acceleration. And we'll talk about average acceleration and we'll talk about instantaneous acceleration and we'll compare the two. Um, so those are the three topics, and so let's get started. Okay, let's talk about displacement. Displacement is basically how far an object has moved from its original location. So let's say, for example, my original location is by the whiteboard, and I wanted to walk across the room to a wall that was 10 feet away. I would have to have a displacement of 10 feet to reach the wall. And that's basically all displacement is, how far an object has moved from its original location. Now we're gonna do an example here to explain it a little bit more precisely in, in, in mathematical terms. So let's use the example of a race car traveling down a straight racetrack. And so this will be our straight racetrack. And we'll say that this is the starting line and this is the end. Okay? And this racetrack is 400 meters long. I used M for meter. Now I could have used units of feet or miles for, uh, for, the, for the units here. I chose to use meters. And we will have the race car starting at the starting line. Now to define displacement in mathematical terms, we need to know the original location of the object and we need to know the final location of the object. So in this example, uh, the race car is starting at the starting line, and so we'll say that its original location um, is equal to zero meters. And I used the variable x to define its position, because we are traveling along the side-to-side -side direction, which we'll call the x-axis. So we'll just we'll put this arrow here to uh, define that as this direction as the x-axis. And so x1 stands for the first position of the car. And we'll say that its final position, since it's traveling to the finish line, this 400 meters, is equal to 400 meters. So its second X position is 400 meters from the starting line. And so the way that we define displacement mathematically is um, like this. It's, 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 it's the final location minus its initial location. And notice that I, I use this triangle shape here uh, next to X. And that triangle is um, the Greek letter delta, and it stands for the change in something. So whenever you see this symbol, you can replace it with the words change in, and um, that's pretty much all you have to do. So in this case, it's the change in X, or the change in the position. And that is defined here as X2 minus X1. So in this example, our displacement would be x2, or 400 meters, minus x1, which is 0 meters. So the car's displacement was 400 meters to finish the race. Pretty straightforward. Now let's take this a step further. Let's say that we wanted to know 
how far the race car has traveled between um, this line and this line. And so you see that we need to redefine the initial and final position because now we want to know the displacement between these two lines, not the starting line and the end line. So again, the car travels in a straight line and we want to know its displacement between when it hits line one and when it hits line two. And we'll say that line one is 100 feet away from the starting line. So X1 in this case would be, I'm sorry, 100 meters from the starting line. So in this case, X1 would be 100 meters. And X2 would be at the second line. And X2 is say 300 meters from the starting line. So now we have new variables, new x1, new x2 variable. So in this case, we plug it back into our displacement equation, and x2 is 300, and x1 was 100. So the car's displacement between these two lines was 300 minus 100, or 200 meters. So it's, it's really important to point out here that the that displacement only depends on two points. It depends on the initial point and it depends on the final point. It doesn't matter what's going on in between these two points. That's only the only two things you need to define displacement is its initial point and its final point. Okay, now we're going to talk about the difference between displacement and distance traveled. We saw in our first example of the race car traveling down the straight racetrack that it started with a position x1 equals zero meters and x2 equals 400 meters, and the displacement was 400 meters, x2 minus x1. And this car traveled straight down the x-axis along a straight line. Okay. Let's say, for example, that instead of taking this straight path, this car took this red path and swerved down the racetrack, and then finally finished at the finish line. Now let's, do the same, let's go through the same process again and find displacement for this red, red path. In this case, x1 would again be zero meters. That's because we started at the starting line, just like the first path. And again, since we ended at the end path, our x2 is again 400 meters. And so with that in mind, the displacement of this red path is x2 minus x1, which is 400 minus zero. So you see that even though that this path, this car has traveled in this up and down motion along with the side to side motion and traveled farther, it had a farther distance traveled, it had the exact same displacement because it has the exact same initial position and the exact same final position as the first straight path or this black path. And so that points out the difference, the difference between distance traveled and displacement. Now let's do one more example on this before we move on. And so let's ignore this top half of the board for now. And we'll say that we have a racetrack again. And our car at the starting line. And it's 400 meters long again. Now since it's starting at the start line, we'll say that X1 again is zero meters. And in this example, the car travels straight down the racetrack along the x-axis in a straight line, hits the finish line, and turns around and ends at the starting line, right where it started from. And so we have to define its second position, its final position, as zero meters again. And if we plug this into the displacement equation, or x2 minus x1, we find that its displacement is zero minus zero, or zero meters but it traveled a distance of 800 meters. It traveled down 400 meters and back 400 meters. So its distance traveled was 800 meters when its displacement was zero. And that's the difference between displacement and distance traveled.